Hi, my name is Mark Gatter from tunnelvisionltd.co.uk, and thank you for checking out these videos on Adobe InDesign CC, the best layout program ever. If you like the video, then please do check out my website, tunnelvisionltd.co.uk or .com, and on the homepage you'll find a link to the complete course list either on Udemy or Skillshare. I, of course, invite you to sign up. And if you like the course, please tell me. And if you've got a question, please contact me and tell me. I will respond. If you've got an idea about something else that you'd like to see a video about, and you tell me and I make a video, I will send you a free coupon to my videos on Udemy or Skillshare. So please check it out. What have you got to lose? If you've got an object selected in InDesign, and I'll just go ahead and select this object, and you go to the Edit menu, you'll see that you've got Copy and Paste, and you've also got Paste in Place. Now this is a really useful shortcut to learn, and I'll show you why. This is a master page on a 16-page document. There it all is. And I've put page numbering icons in place, and I've got Master Page A. That's the only master page that I've got. I don't have any others. Well, how about if I've got a layout on master page A and I want to add a new master page with a different layout, master page B, but I want to run page numbers through A and B contiguously so the page numbers on B are in exactly the same place as they were on A. This is how you do it. If I select both these objects, I'll just use Command or Control A, that's Select All, and then I could use Command or Control C, and that's Copy, now, if I did Command or Control V, it just pastes them into the middle of the page, and that's what Paste does. It'll actually paste it into the dead center of the screen. Whatever part of your page is showing, it'll just go straight into the center of the screen. I don't want them there. So I've already got them copied. I don't need to copy them again. If I go to the Pages window and click on the Options button, I can say New Master, and it's going to name them, you know, A, B, C, D, and so on. So this one's going to be B. And it's a two-page master, and it's a four-portrait, and I haven't changed anything. So there it is. But now, instead of using Paste, I'm going to use Paste in Place. And the shortcut for that is Command or Control, Alt, Shift, V. And there you go. Now I've got them in exactly the same place on the B master as they are on the A master. And to prove it, I'm going to apply the B-Master to a couple of pages in my document. Now there's a quick and easy way of doing that as well. So let's say the first four pages are title page, half title page, copyright page, and contents. And what I did there was to click on each page in turn when I held down the command or the control key. What I could do instead is click on one and shift click on four. And the shift key kind of means that you're designating the beginning and the end of a list. And now to cherry pick, I could command click on additional pages. And that's a toggle. I could click again and deselect the page. So there I could just go through the document selecting pages at random. Now I want to apply the B master to all of them simultaneously. You see that they've all got an A in the top outside corner. Well, if you hold down the Alt key and then click on the B master, bang. Now those are all formatted with the B master. So let's go look at this one. This is pages four and five. I'll double click on four and I've got the number on page four and the number on page five and nobody would ever know that there are two different master pages formatting it. If I go back to the B master and I draw an object on the left hand page, so I get the rectangle tool, go to swatches and choose a fill color of green and then draw a shape. And I'm going to draw a slightly different shape on the right-hand page. And you can see that the objects I've drawn on the master page now follow through into the document. The object on the left page goes only to the left-hand pages, and the object on the right page goes only to the right-hand pages. I'm going to double-click on the A master, and then switch to the ellipse tool and I'll draw a tall, narrow ellipse on the left-hand page and a wide, flat ellipse on the right-hand page, and you can see the result. Every page now holds the items that are on the master pages, but the left-hand master page can only format a left-hand document page, 
and a right-hand master page can only format a right-hand page. If I wanted to update, let's say, I want page 9 to become the B master, I could drag the words, or the left-hand page, or the right-hand page, onto page 9, like that, and drop it. And immediately that page is now controlled by the B master, and it shows the object that is on the right-hand page of the B master. And if I go into the document, so here's pages 8 and 9, I cannot select those objects. They're locked. That's the default. Now, in fact, if you Command or Control Shift click on an object, you can select it. And if it's selected, now it's on the document page. It's no longer really a master page object, and you can do whatever you want to it. But here's the interesting thing. The Pages window still says that the B master controls page 8. Well, it doesn't look like it does to me. If I drag the B master back down onto page 8 and drop it again, it reasserts its control. So that's some of how master pages can help you out when you're doing a layout. So thanks again for stopping by, and I hope that video was really helpful to you. And please do check out my website, www.tunnelvisionltd.co.uk, and let me know what you thought. Bye for now.